This is Apostle Calvin Brown of Christ Be Glorified Ministries, and welcome to another broadcast centered around the kingdom of God. Amen. We have a, a lot to get to today, so we want to go ahead and get started in the word. Right before I was coming on air, the Lord gave me a word. So I believe that this service is a, is a prophetic service as the Lord handles um, different subjects. It is, it is prophetic in nature. Um, the Lord spoke to me before I came upon the air. He said that he is the God who knows all and sees all. He knows all and sees all. And so the definition of, of God, if they were a, a true God and there's only one God, that God would be able to know all and to see all. Amen. And yet in this earth, there are those who are not gods who purport to know all and to see all. And so anytime there are those who are false gods, amen, when God comes on the scene, he causes the false God to fall upon his face like Dagon, to be broken into pieces. Amen. And so I was reminded of a, of a couple of things. I was reminded of Elijah on Mount Carmel. Amen. Against the prophets of Baal. Baal was a false God, but he was purported to control the weather and, and, and fertility and fruitfulness and all those things. So God gave them dryness, amen, for three and a half years before the rains, amen. And in that dryness, God was teaching them that he is the God, amen, over fruitfulness and abundance. And the false gods were seen as vanity, empty, amen, that against the Lord, they were, were no gods, amen. And then God said during the time when he told Moses to tell Pharaoh to let his people go free, God, one of the things that God said, he says that, oh, I will receive glory from the gods of the Egyptians. I, I will be honored, <laughs> amen, from those of those false gods. In other words, whenever there are those who purport to be gods, begin to flaunt themselves. When God comes on the scene, he shows that he is God alone, that he is the only wise God and that all others are not God. <laughs> Amen. And so that's what the Lord will be dealing with somewhat in this, in this message. Amen. About him being God. And because of that, what he is bringing, bringing to bear. Amen. And so a little bit about me, amen. I'm consumed with the word of God, amen. I am consumed with the word, not just, not just the written word, but, but the spoken word. You have to have the spoken word along with the written word to guide you in the written word. Even in the written word, the written word must be able to speak to you, to be a living word, for you to be guided and led by the Spirit or guided and led by, by the Lord. Amen. And so I'm consumed by the word. I, I wait on the word for the word to speak. Amen. There are things that God has told me. If I didn't have time to write it down and, and maybe I had forgotten, I would wait on that one word until that word comes back to me. I may wait all day. You say, you know, why weren't you just reading and, and, and doing the things that you know to do? I was consumed by the word that the Lord had spoken because I knew that that word, that spoken word was what I needed and what the people needed. So I would, I would wait upon that word. And God was faithful to that word. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit reminds us of the things that he had spoken. He reminds us of those things. So I would, I would wait upon that word until that word would come back to me and God would be faithful. And I would show that I was hungry and thirsty 
for the word of God. And so there have been things that God has has spoken that he's been reminding me. Amen. And so he wants me to kind of frame it up in this in this message, some things that he has spoken and some things that he is speaking. Amen. So here's what he wants me to let you know. There has been an attack against America and across the world in an attempt to take away freedom from the people. If you want to know what is going on, there is an attack on freedom. America is used to it because America was born of freedom. In other words, we fought for our freedom and we fought for independence. Amen. That whole deal about 1776 and the Declaration of Independence in the Revolutionary War, amen, was for freedom and mainly religious freedom, which affects all other freedom. We say religious freedom, but we are saying that the freedom to to worship God and to serve God, amen. We enshrine these in our documents. We said that the government cannot impose any laws against our freedom to worship, our freedom to assemble. So all eyes are on America, amen, the bastion of freedom, the bedrock, amen, of freedom, a nation which is planted by the Lord, amen. And so those seeds of freedom were planted by the Lord. Amen. And so there, there, there are those who have the audacity amen, to come against that which is planted by the Lord. This is not of flesh and blood. Amen. But this is of the Lord and this is of his spirit. And so they had the audacity to come against freedom, which was that which was planted by the Lord. So they are coming against that which is of the Lord. Amen. They they are striking against. They had the audacity like like those false gods and, and people who follow false gods. Amen. To come against that which is which is of the Lord. Listen, that which is established by the Lord is his is his righteousness. Amen. And so that which is established by the Lord, no one can do anything against. Amen. Amen. And so the people just have to wake up and get with God. Amen. Because God gave man this earth realm, but he he planted seeds in this earth. Amen. And so so we have to awaken to the things that God is doing and simply get with God. And then we will flow with God and we will flow with his spirit and his Holy Spirit will give us the victory. Amen. So there has been an attempt to take away freedom from the people, to remove the symbols of freedom. Amen. So listen, everything is spiritual. Amen. Everything in the natural came out of the spirit. Amen. And is either attached to light or is attached to darkness. Amen. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of light. The kingdom of Satan is the kingdom of darkness. So when you see attempts to remove symbols of of freedom, such as the flag, the disdain, the flag that represents everything on that flag represents freedom. Amen. Everything on that flag represents integrity, uh, freedom, uh, purity, you know, the, the original colonies and all those things are those people who gathered around freedom. Amen. Here in the United States. Amen. And so you could see it. The reason I I mentioned the United States, even though this attempt to take away freedom is is across the world, that God gave us concrete things in America to look at that were attached to him. And we were in covenant with the Lord. And the Lord says, if you will keep these things, I will be the God in the midst of you. Amen. Amen. But that which God planted, this is what I want you to see. You cannot get rid of what God has planted. You cannot beat out or beat down what God has planted. When you you begin to beat on what God has placed, 
Now you're getting God's attention in a, in a wrong way and you're loosing the mechanisms which, which are of the Lord. Amen. So people have tried to erase the symbols of freedom, to erase the history which chronicles the price that we paid for freedom. The one thing about our history in America, it shows how precious freedom is. The price that we paid so that people would be more appreciative of their freedom. Amen. And so the devil messed up. Amen. Because the things that the devil attempted to do for evil, God turns around for good. You can find that in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. This is Joseph speaking. His brothers entreated him and did him much evil. Amen. They, they sold him away into slavery. They, they deceived their father. They, they lied. They said that Joseph was dead. Amen. And so in a part of the father, his, his heart died. Amen. Hearing that Jacob, that, 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 his, that Joseph was dead. Amen. So Jacob, who is Israel, that he says that a part of him died when he thought that Joseph had died. Amen. And so you know that story. I won't go into it, but how he went from slavery to Potiphar's house and then to the prison and then to prime minister of, of Egypt. Amen. And so the, the brothers had to come back amen, and bow before Joseph and Joseph revealed himself. And that's a type and a shadow that Jesus is manifest. Amen. That people did not know that they had dishonored Jesus. The church did not know that they had dishonored Jesus. The brethren did not know that they had dishonored Jesus. Amen. But Jesus will manifest himself. And so this is what Joseph said. He said, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about, as it is this day, to save many people alive. Amen. So that was that evil that was perpetrated. God allowed it because he was working a thing to save more than Joseph, but to save the nations. Amen which is, that is salvation, which is what God is speaking of, this revival to save many people alive. So God is, Holy Ghost, God is speaking about revival. Amen. And so that which is of big tech, that which is of intelligence, amen, that which is of a coup, amen, these are just part of the things of people purporting themselves to be a God, but they are not a God. Amen. That they are false gods. Amen. And so anytime somebody shows up to be, uh, 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 to show himself that they are a God, but they are no God, they are a false God. Amen. Then God shows himself as God. Amen. So that's what's happening. That these people have risen, amen, rose up against the Lord and tried to show themselves that they were in control. To try to show themselves that they were a God. But they are no gods. Amen. And it simply allows the Lord to be God. Amen. So that's where we are. There are those who purport themselves to be God. They have the audacity to take upon those characteristics. Amen. That they can know all and to see all. Amen. And they said, because we can know all and see all, we are gods. Amen. They, which are of, of, Big tech day, which is of intelligence agencies and more besides, amen. In this technological age, the, the ability, the capacity 
to, to see more than ever before, to know more than ever before, to, to culminate that which is called knowledge, to culminate that which is, which is called wisdom, and yet God is God. Amen. Amen. And so when people do that, they have, they have set the stage for God to come on, on the scene, just like at Mount Carmel. Baal purporting himself to be a God. Amen. And then what did the prophet say? He says, why stand ye halt between two opinions? If Baal is God, then serve him. But if God be God, then serve him. And so the God that answers by fire. So this is a time where God is answering and showing himself. He is God. He will consume everything. Amen. He is a consuming fire. He will consume everything. He will leave nothing um, um, to doubt. Amen. He will leave no unanswered questions as he shows himself to be God. So, so this attack against freedom, it made people recognize how precious freedom was and to crave to hunger and to thirst for freedom. So instead of squashing freedom, the, those who purport to be gods, who knows all and sees all, to crush the people, to make the people bow, on the contrary, what the devil meant for evil, God turns around for good. Amen. Whoa, Papa. I told you this is a prophetic service because God is dealing with the word, but he's also dealing with a living word, a prophetic word to help you, to empower you in the day. We're living in a day. The, the day, as your day is, so is your strength. Amen. So in this day, you put on strength. Amen. In the day of the Lord, in the day of light is a time to put on strength. Holy Ghost. We are not, we are not crushed, the Bible says. <laughs> Amen. They tried to crush us. Amen. But we are not crushed. And I'm here to tell you by the Holy Ghost, we are not distressed. <laughs> Holy Ghost. I'm teaching you a new way. Berto, mamma no si precosa vaca. An attack <laughs> has, has worked the opposite. <laughs> so we recognize the preciousness of freedom. Now we crave, we hunger and thirst for the spirit of freedom. The spirit of freedom is the Holy Spirit. That's why I say you can't crush freedom. Because the spirit of freedom is the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, it says, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. And so trying to crush freedom is trying to crush the spirit. But the spirit of it is the Holy Spirit, who is God. So the enemy had the audacity <laughs> To try to crush God, to try to crush the spirit of God, who is the spirit of freedom. Hallelujah. You, can't, you cannot crush it, but it works the opposite. <laughs> Amen. That when you try to crush freedom, it awakens people. Amen. That their freedom is trying to be taken away. It, it causes people to be emboldened. Amen. To stand to stand for freedom, amen. So those who know freedom, we are called to flame, to fan the flames of freedom, of liberty. So God said, this is a time of stirring, amen. Jesus said, My, the, the willing fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge the threshing floor, the fan, amen, is in his hand, <laughs> holy ghost. <laughs> And you fan, you fan the flames of freedom. Amen. It's like the, if you push, you're stirred. Amen. You are activated. And so God says, 
that this is a time the church was asleep, amen. And so it was necessary, amen, for the church to be confronted, amen, so that the church could be awakened, so the church could be stirred, amen. Amen. Manish, 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 Manish. Holy Ghost, I heard the Lord say, I want you pop, 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 to fan the flames of freedom. Hey, man. You said, me, Lord, who is not such an outward person. God says, yes, you. Hey, man, I'm messing with them. <laughs> I am fanning the flames of freedom. The Spirit, Kurabashata, the Holy Spirit is stirred, Kurabashata, and it is those who are aware of the stirring of the Lord will be able to move with the movements which are of the Lord. It's movements, everybody, there's, there's movements in this earth, amen, everybody got a movement, amen, but you have not seen a movement until the Lord moves. Hallelujah. Your little movement <laughs> will be crushed against the movements which are of the Lord. So, so we're talking about revival. Amen. That, that it is the, the impetus. Amen. For revival, the, the stirring of, of, of the, and, and the fanning of the flames of freedom is the impetus for revival and a great awakening. And the church who was a sleeping giant is awakened. Amen. It is, it is to be stirred. Amen. Against that which the enemy is trying to build, which is a false structure. It's, it's like the, the, the Tower of Babel to stop it in its tracks. A false structure, hey amen, being built by the enemy to the heights to act like they are somebody, hey amen, has simply provoked the Lord. But it, but it works, hey amen, according to the principles which are of the Lord, hey amen. So I'm saying don't be distressed. Understand that there are movements now, hey man, which will bring about the revival that you've been hungering for and that you've been thirsting for and an awakening of the church, hey man. And so earlier this week, I told you, I crave for the word, hey man, but especially the spoken word that speaks to the written word because that will put me in the time that I'm supposed to be. The proper time. Lots of word in the word. Amen. I have to be in the time. Holy Ghost that God has called me. The generation that God has called me. Amen. I must be in that generation. Holy Ghost. The, the Lord gave me and my, my wife. Well, actually, my wife a, a word. He said that she was like a person out of time because she was more akin to the, those old, old time Pentecostal, holy, holy people that, that love the Lord. It, it was like she, she had her bags packed, but they were old trunks. <laughs> Amen. And so what God says, he says, that does not get old. That which is of the Lord does not get old. The Lord is bringing that type back into this time. Holy Ghost. In a greater, <laughs> in a greater proportion. Amen. So I heard, I heard the Lord say, earlier this week, I heard the Lord say, he says, ask me for rain in the time of rain. Amen. Now, you must understand when the Lord speaks, you know it's the word, but you don't know whether you read that word or whether you haven't read that word. Amen. So the Lord, this is the word of the Lord. He spoke to me earlier this week. He said, ask me. He said, for rain in a time of rain. Amen. And I, and I listened. <laughs> Amen. And so the Lord sent me to the word. That, that's where he would begin to expound unto me what he meant. And so I found it. I found it in Zechariah chapter 10. In the book of Zechariah chapter 10. Amen. The word that the Lord spoke to me. 
Hallelujah. Beginning with verse 1. And I'm going to read down to verse 6. Amen. It says, verse 1, Ask the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. The Lord will make flashing clouds, and he will give them showers of rain, grass in every field for everyone. For the idols speak delusion. That's what I was talking about, those false gods, how they speak delusion, deception. They, they speak to deceive the mainstream media. It, it, it speaks that which is to deceive. Amen. It's the mouthpiece, the false prophet, amen, the, the spokesperson for the antichrist spirit and, and for the devil to, to, to carry out the works of Satan, amen. So ask the Lord for rain in the time of latter rain. The Lord will make flashing clouds. He will give them showers of rain, grass in the field for everyone. For the idols speak delusion. The diviners envision lies and tell false dreams. They comfort the vain. That's where we were under that spirit of the world, under, under that sleep and that slumber and that drowsiness and that drunkenness. The spirit of the world was trying to take over in America and, and across the world by these idols, these false gods, and these false spokespeople, amen, which are not spokespeople of the Lord, amen. It says, therefore, the people... When their way like sheep, they are in trouble because there is no shepherd. My anger is kindled against the shepherds and I will punish the goat herds. That's the leaders. That's the spiritual leaders. God says this was happening because of the spiritual leaders. In other words, shepherds cover the flock. Amen. That the anointing of the shepherd covers the flock. The, the flock, the sheep are blissful. Amen. Yes, they are operating in faith. They don't even know. Amen. The sleepless nights are the prayers of the shepherds. Amen. To cover the flock. Amen. The flock says that I excelled in, in faith. Amen. And they did excel in faith and they did have intimacy with the Lord. But the covering is so important that God looks to the shepherd for the condition of the flock. Amen. So if the, if the flock is out of whack, God doesn't look at the flock. He looks at the shepherd. Amen. And the leaders. Amen. He says, they're in trouble because there's no shepherd. My anger is kindled against the shepherds and I will punish the goat herds or the leaders for the Lord of hosts will visit his flock, the house of Judah, and he will make them as his royal horse in battle. Now, now it's on like a chicken bone, as we say in America. Holy Ghost. This is exactly what happened. The church was not completely covered by sight. When you are covered, you have the sight of the shepherd, the vision, which is of the shepherd. Amen. And so that, yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil for God is with you. His rod and his staff, they comfort you. The spirit and the word, they, they comfort you because of, of the shepherd. So when people begin to say, Hallelujah. Plague. If they say COVID-19, Korobata. If they say racial unrest, Satra, Morta Verto, Mother Torma Kasha, Morta Vertumbrobosa. Hallelujah. The Lord said to say it that way because the words are triggers. And when people say certain words, they, they, the enemy triggers certain things and a veil comes over their eyes. Amen. And they don't see. They say, you know, you're saying our lives don't matter. You're saying our race don't matter. It triggers certain things. Amen. So by the power of the Holy Ghost, God wants to blast all of that vanity and bring you to the truth. Copa, verto, mara, bosta, hapa, hapa, hapa. War, 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 says the Lord. War, cabra bushata. You provoke the Lord. You mess with the Lord. Hallelujah. You touch 
the apple of his eye. <laughs> and now the Lord comes to this meek little flock, these lambs, these sheep, and he's making them a horse, <laughs> his horse, his battle horse for war. Morta verto bosabakashata. Mosabakashata. It's for the Lord of hosts. That's the Lord of the angelic armies. And we become the host when God is in our midst. He's the, he's, he's the God in the midst of us, the mighty one in the midst. We become part of that host. Amen. We flow as one. Amen. Who won the battle? Amen. Did Joshua win the battle against Gibby? I mean, for Gibby? Amen. Or was it the angelic host? Was it God throwing down hell the, 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 the size of automobiles? Was it the Lord, Kabarita? Or was Joshua simply flowing <laughs> as in the host of the Lord, Kabarita? Marosha, Tarabosha, the God of covenant, Carol. You better learn about covenant. God is on your side. God says, I want to be the mighty one in the midst of you. I am the Lord of hosts. You will become host only, get this, only if his mantle comes upon you. Think of this, the Lord upon his holy, upon his mount, hallelujah. That with, with his with his robe and his cloak, amen. And his his mantle spiritually, Robo Shata, covers those as we ride. We ride. We ride with the Lord. Those that are submitted to authority, those who are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, those who move with the Holy Spirit to allow the Lord to awaken, you can ride with the Lord. Amen. But now the Lord says. The, the mild sheep, amen, has become the, the royal horse of the Lord. Hallelujah. His, his, his battle, his battle horse. It says, I will make them his royal horse in the battle. From him comes the cornerstone. He's the chief cornerstone. From him comes the tent peg, that which makes the, the, the tabernacle secure. From him, the battle bow that strikes the heart of the enemy. Amen. From him, every ruler together, he binds the, the, the rulers who are submitted to his authority. They shall be like mighty men who tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in battle. They shall fight because the Lord is with them and riders on horses shall be put to shame. That's the enemy. And I will strengthen the house of Judah and I will save the house of Joseph. I will bring them back because I have mercy on them. They shall be as though I had not cast them aside. For I am the Lord their God, and I will hear them. So it, it's a time of that that of of revival. Amen. Revival means something was asleep or dead. You you revive something that is asleep or something that that is dead. Amen. And so this is what happened, that, that we were at ease in, in, in Zion. We thought our Christianity was right. Amen. We thought that we regarded the Lord and that we regarded righteousness, but we have to admit it. This is part of repentance. We missed it. Amen. And so we repent before the Lord. We cry out for rain in the time of rain. Amen. The time of rain, that due time for rain. Nothing misses the Lord. Amen. And the Lord misses nothing. Amen. His, his, his timing is impeccable. That we were dry. We was like postured. Amen. And that we began to cry out to the Lord that we knew that we needed the Lord. Amen. How, why did it take so long to recognize that we needed the Lord? Amen. And so now is the time of revival. Amen. The TV news and, and ministers, even ministers of the gospel, they, they mimicked messages which were of the enemy that put the people in malaise. Amen. That, that, that caused the people to be distressed in heavy. Amen. The people without the Lord are distressed. A nation without the Lord, there is heaviness. 
upon those nations, amen. But it, deep in the heart of people is the yearning cry for freedom. So even in the midst of communistic nations, socialistic nations, and, and that attempt to bring that wicked spirit and those wicked spirits in the United States, amen, simply causes people to yearn for freedom, yearn for that which is not, which is not of that communist spirit. That, that those are simply names. You understand we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen. We put names on things. Amen. The devil is the devil. He comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. He used many methods and people. Amen. And he has used a people that were devoted unto him. In other words, the 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 the, the, the wickedness, the the law. Listness, amen. That those that have given themselves to the mysteries of iniquity, those that have given themselves to the mystery of, of lawlessness. In other words, mystery means secret. That means to be initiated into. That means to purposely try to get the wisdom that the Satan has, that Satan has, which is wicked wisdom. And so these people, Satan has promised them to raise them up into positions. Amen. But those positions are not of the Lord. So you can pray against those positions. People say that the church says, and rightfully so, all, didn't all authority comes from the Lord. Yes. But the Bible says, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Amen. You're in a place Amen, that you're not supposed to be. And iniquity is found in your heart. Amen. And you have become corrupted by the wisdom. Amen. And so we got to get you out of those places, but it's by the workings of the Lord. Amen. We are like mild sheep. We just love in everybody. But God says, I'm going to make you a mighty steed. I'm going to make you a royal mount. Amen. I'm fixing to do battle because there are those who purported themselves to be God and they are not God. They are claiming the names that belong to me. Amen. And just like on Mount Carmel, I'm fixing to deal with it, saith the Lord. Amen. So by his Holy Spirit, God is activating the people to be his battle horse and activating them for battle. Now God is going on the attack. See, the ways of God, the principles of God, that heaven belongs to God, but the earth he gave to the children of men, the sons of men. He tells Adam to have dominion and authority, but you do that attached to my crown. In other words, you don't rebel against me. You acknowledge that that dominion and authority, that power comes from me. Amen. And so God can work a thing in this earth, but he needs man to participate. God wants to be God. Amen. So he had to stir us. He had to awaken us. And many times... He, he had to make us agitated, not satisfied where we are. Amen. God does a thing to make us hungry. God does a thing to make us thirsty. God does a thing to make us know that the earth cannot satisfy and the arm of the flesh cannot satisfy. Amen. And so people say, everything will be all right. Just, just do what we say. Bow to us. In, in, in 30 days, this thing will be over with. Amen. Just bow to us in 30 days. Not knowing that the one that, that told you to bow was not God. You only bow to the Lord. You only honor the Lord. He was trying to, to get signals. He was trying to get from you. That, that in the spirit realm, that you were relying on them to be your God. Amen. God is a jealous God. And so repentance is appropriate. Amen. It's not God. God, does he not sit high and look low? Is not his throne in, in Zion? Is he not able to save? Amen. Is he not able to deliver? Is he not the Lord thy God that healeth thee? The name, the name of the Lord, the name of the Lord is to be revealed. Whosoever shall call upon the name. Did you call? Amen. Upon the name of the Lord for the thing that you needed salvation from, whether it be healing, whether it be deliverance, amen, or a mindset. Is this of God? Is this not of God? The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. Did you call? Amen. Upon the Lord 
for your salvation? Or did you honor something else or someone else is God? So, so, so God is jealous, amen? If it, if it seems like the, 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 the energy of the Lord is heightened, amen? He is, he is all powerful. But if it seems like that, that there's more energy and, and power and God is more invested, it is because people provoked him. Amen. Now it's time. Amen. It's the right time and it is due time. Amen. And so let's look at this battle horse. Amen. In Job, because if, if you're going to be the Lord's battle horse, you got to know how to act. Amen. In the book, in the book of Job, it tells about the battle horse in <clears throat> chapter 39. Chapter 39, let's start with 19. This is God rebuking Job. He says, have you given a horse strength? Have you clothed his neck with thunder? Can you frighten him like a locust? His majestic snorting strikes terror. He paws in the valley. He rejoices in his strength. He gallops with the clash of arms. He mocks at fear and he is not frightened, nor does he turn back from the sword. So what does God say? A people who are not afraid. So his anointing comes upon the horse. The horse loves war. This is a picture of a horse that loves it. He like, man, I like this. Woo. I love war. He runs toward the battle. Hey, man, he's, he paused. That means he's raring to go. And so that's what they did. Amen. I'm, I'm trying to, you, to get you to see I'm linking all these things together. They have awakened a sleeping, a sleeping giant. Amen. And, and instead of being docile, passive, amen, that we are in war. We recognize that we are at war against the forces of darkness. Amen. We recognize we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but yet we are anxious, for lack of a better word. We are excited that this day has come, the time, finally, amen. Without war, there's no conquest, amen. Something needs to be defeated, amen. I am looking forward to war, Papa. The Lord is riding forth in war. Holy Ghost, there, there's no Papa Semborosha. It's eternity, amen. It's the same Jesus, hallelujah, who destroys the Antichrist, amen. The same Jesus who never loses a battle. Holy Ghost, now we are all part of that battle. The, the Lord has pointed us in the direction that we should go. He's opened our senses, he's opened our eyes, and he has put upon us the, the, a, a zeal, a cloak, of zeal, rubber fair to baramata. And now we look forward, we paw in the valley, we rejoice in his strength. He gallops in the clash of arms. He mocks at fear he is, and is not frightened, nor does he turn back from the sword. The quiver rattles against him. The glittering spear, the javelin, he devours the distance with fierceness and rage. That means quick. That, that horse is running fast, amen. Galloping up distance, amen. Nor does he come to a halt because the trumpet has sounded. That, that's the war trumpet. Amen. He does not come to a halt. If, if the enemy says that this is war, let them say this is war. We do not stop because that trumpet has sounded. Amen. At the blast of the trumpet, he says, aha, he smells the battle from afar. The thunder of captains and shouting. <laughs> amen. This is your day, amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, amen. This is the day that the Lord has called you. This is a day, hallelujah, which was pre-planned, amen. Nothing escapes the Lord. He knew the enemy would raise his ugly head. And the Lord has prepared you for this day, amen. That everything just simply loosed. It just, every, everything, every stone that the devil piled on, was it meant more judgment for the devil. Amen. He's been weighed in the balance. And those who were filled of the devil, amen, that the devil used have been weighed 
in the balance, amen. Every stone, kaba, 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 has, has tilted the scale and shown that they were guilty. The, the, the Lord has to be loosed, amen, by the church, amen. And so we have to work with the Lord. I want you to see that we are working in concert with the Lord. We're working in concert with the angels. We are working in concert with heaven. That is the kingdom of God, amen. We're flowing with the Lord. We're at one with the Lord. We don't stop in the midst and strive against each other. We are not bickering, amen. But we have one goal in mind, and that is the Lord's victory, to give the Lord his honor, for the Lord to be honored in America, for the Lord to be honored in America, for the Lord to be honored in America. For the Lord to be honored, amen. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, a thing is established. I say he is honored in Australia. He is honored in Australia. He is honored in Australia. He is honored in New Zealand. He is honored in New Zealand. He is honored in New Zealand. He is honored in South Africa. He is honored in South Africa. He is honored in South Africa. Hear the words of the Lord. Kita Ramo Shanta. There the case of Orochaba. All I did was tap into the word that was already spoken in the spirit. You name your nation. Those words were already going forth. I simply tapped into the frequency of what God was saying over America and other nations. You put your nation in there. Amen. That we are dealing with stuff. God is riding into battle. Amen. Can you sense it? Don't be afraid. Go ahead headlong into the battle corporal <laughs> that is the battle horse I want to get into this rain in the time oh, oh he's so strong rain in the time of rain amen what is that rain in Jeremiah the book of Jeremiah chapter 5 we'll do this very quickly 5 verse 24 Jeremiah, this, this is a people that did not know, but God is still speaking to them what he wants to do. He says, they do not say in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God, who gives rain, both the former and the latter in a season, who reserves for us the appointed weeks of harvest. So the time the right time is the time for the harvest to come forth. The due time, the due season is the time of harvest. God gives the former rain. He gives the latter rain. The former rain is the autumn rain. The latter rain is, is the spring rain. But they, but they represent something. That if the, the fields get the proper rain, they will give forth the harvest. Amen. So the the spring rain and the autumn rain, that is the former and the latter. So rain, it represents an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And in these days, it is a culmination of the old and the new. So this is prophetic. So that's what the Lord is saying, that any rains that God has poured out, any rains, any outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We, we're talking about certain revivals and visitations of the Lord. Amen. Such as the day of Pentecost, such as Azusa Street. Amen. Azusa Street, such as the healing revivals with John G. Lake, A.A. A. Allen, Oral Roberts, such as revivals of salvation where that, that, that multitudes upon multitudes of people are saved, you know. So like Billy Graham, Reinhard Bonnke, all these people being saved at one time. Amen. So this is a culmination of the rains. Amen. So the former and the latter have come together, compressed in this time because the days are short. Amen. And this is harvest time and Jesus is coming soon. Amen. So prophetically speaking, this is a time of the culmination of of the rains, amen, which are an outpouring, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Due season means the appointed time, the right time. And the rains always bring forth the harvest, amen. So in Joel, the book of Joel, the 
the book of Joel chapter 2. It talks about the rain and it talks about it talks about the harvest. Amen. In Joel chapter 2 verse 23 through 26. This is right before God says I'm pouring out my spirit upon all flesh. Okay. Verse 23 through 26 it says be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow with new wine and oil, and I will restore the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, the chewing locust. So that is restoration time. What the devil has taken, God is restoring. The Bible says that heaven must retain Jesus until the restoration of all things, at least the revelation of it. In other words, that the manifestation of the revelation, we said the secret things belong to God, but that which is revealed is for us and for our children's children. And so God wants to get that revelation of the, the wisdom and knowledge of God, which restores all things. So God will have done his part. He has given that revelation to a people, a generation who receives the revelation. That's what it means to restore all things. And so everything that the devil has stolen concerning relationships and, 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 and finances and, and things of that nature, family, harvest, Amen. Everything that the devil has stolen, sickness, God is restoring those things. In this revival, it is easy to receive because it is rain. Amen. In revival, it is easier to receive because rains are falling. You cannot deny that it is, it is raining and outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That kupa, sandropa, sandro. You cannot deny the rain, Kobo. You cannot deny the rain. It's raining. It's raining. It's raining. You cannot deny the rain, Kobo. So he says to be glad. So the outpouring of the Holy Spirit will produce gladness and rejoicing. Even, even the spirit of joy. Amen. It will release the spirit of joy. The Holy Spirit will. The, 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 the former rain actually means the teacher of righteousness. So God will give the former rain and the latter rain. The former rain actually means the rain which teaches righteousness. Amen. The rain, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that teaches righteousness. Amen. That word moderately it means according to righteousness or justice. So God gives the former and the latter rain. The former rain, it teaches righteousness, what is right, what God intended for this earth, what God intended for America, what God intended from the beginning before there was sin. Amen. And, and he will give it moderately. That means according to justice. So justice is this. Justice says Avenge me of my, of my adversary. When a person has been harmed or hurt, amen. Even when we are just believing God, using our faith, believing God for increase, believing God to save our family, we are violently snatching those out of the enemy's hands, amen. You have to see what is going on spiritually. That when good things are happening, Good represent that which God intended from the beginning. God made everything good. When good happens, it violently affects the enemy. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the violence snatch it. They take it by force. Amen. So let's, let's look at the harvest. What is the harvest? The harvest is corn. The harvest is wine. And the harvest is oil. Amen. And out of that, there are green pastures. So this is the last thing that I will say. The, the harvest, amen. The harvest is corn. Corn is where we get bread. Some, some, the, 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 the grain, amen. Some, some uh, passages of scripture say corn. Some says wheat is the harvest. It's where we get our bread, amen. 
And so the corn, it represents the word of God. Amen. So the harvest was just a harvest of the word. The wine is the new wine of the Holy Spirit. So God is pouring out his spirit. People are getting drunk with the new wine. Amen. It also represents gladness and spiritual awareness. The oil is the anointing. Amen. So the, 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 the corn or the wheat, amen, let's just say the meal and the oil makes the bread, amen. And so it is that which is of the word and the anointing. The word and the anointing produces the bread of life. The, the, the bread, <laughs> holy Ghost, the meal and the oil makes the unleavened bread. That, that, that is the sincere bread. It is the bread of life without kurabosha without without leaven without without sin without malice without those things so the meal hallelujah and the oil makes the bread which gives you the life you must have some anointing on your life amen you must sit under the anointing amen not just the word but the the anointing so the meal and the oil, Koborobosha, makes, makes the bread, Koroboshata, and the wine, amen. So now we are in covenant. The bread and the wine, Koboshata, it is the meal that, Koroboshata, that, that is the, the, the bread, the, the, the bread and the wine is the meal of covenant. Yes. Like Melchizedek, he met him. He met Abraham, Kobo Shata, with bread and with wine. That is communion around the Lord, the Lord's body. So this, this revival, amen, there shall be an awareness, an awakening of that covenant of what Jesus did, that, that, that appreciation, amen, we partake. That those that did it, quote, unquote, unworthily, Paul says, this is not... This, this is not the Lord's Supper. They, they did it in an unworthy manner. Come on. See, not fearing the Lord, not discerning the Lord's body, not counting people as precious. They, they're trying to get ahead for themselves. Shadow Busta Barante. Kiddo, Holy Ghost, the revelation. Holy Ghost of harvest is a revelation that produces. The, the fear of the Lord and appreciation for the price that Jesus paid so that the lifestyle out of that will be one of covenant and holiness unto the Lord. Manus palatum prefero tu burro de chabros. Nana boni non ramo tu si prebu prabosa da bakata. The, the, the Lord says that many are coming to the place where they recognize that they were bound. And they were willing to acknowledge that they were bound. And that the, 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 the way that they were bound, amen, it was because of the enemy. And that was hidden to many, amen, and so... By, by the preaching of the pure word, that they could, are becoming aware. And they want to be loosed. Amen. Jesus says, woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Amen. They want to be, they want to be loosed, but the Lord wants to speak a word to you. As he looses you, the Lord says, you are not loosed to be free to continue in the world. Something has come upon you, even something heavy, even in your household, amen. Something has made you distraught and, and distressed. You want to be loosed and the Lord is willing to loose you, amen. The anointing removes the burden and it destroys the yoke, amen, and that's what the anointing does, amen. And so you're raring to go, you're raring to be loosed. The Lord said, I'm going to loose you with knowledge, amen, with 
knowledge that you will have to carry as you are loosed, amen. For the Bible says the fear of the Lord is clean, amen. And the, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon them, amen. The spirit of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counseling, my knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord, amen. And so the Lord shall give you wisdom which produces fear, amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, amen. And it's how they go together, amen. The Lord says that the Lord is yearning also, amen, for those who will fear him, amen. You, you don't understand, Korobashata, how the Lord needs people to fear him, amen. This sum of the whole matter is fear the Lord, keep his commandment, but you, you did not know how precious it was to the Lord. And so the Lord says, now I shall loose you, amen, but don't run from me, hallelujah, but fear me and come and draw near to me, amen, and I shall keep you free, and I will show you the paths of righteousness, and I shall show you the paths of pleasantness and peace, saith the Lord. Thank you, Father, for that word in Jesus' name, amen, hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah.